know, as far as Saudi Arabia and military patrols in that country, there will be United Nation control there eventually, or whatever global organization they decide to promote. I just don't think that we're going to see the kind of hype we saw around Afghanistan or Iraq or insurgencies. And I think in most cases, the Saudi Arabians are going to take care of their own business. They're already pro-New World Order. Don't you understand that? They're already part of this system. They've already ratted out and betrayed the majority of the Middle East. You know, speaking of the Middle East, I, I might as well get this story out of the way. We've got uh, just a little over an hour left in this episode, if you will, of the Info Warrior. Israel defies U.S. plan, uh, or U.S. with plan for 240 new homes in Palestinian land. And for them to say that they're defying the U.S. is kind of a joke, okay? This is an international intelligence op. The United States doesn't really give a damn about what happens on that Gaza Strip. They know full well, just like the world knows, that genocide is going on there on behalf of the Israelis, okay? An internal U.N. documents, and I don't like the United Nations, admits genocide is going on there. Israel's defense ministry has proposed legalizing 60 existing homes uh, at a Jewish settlement in the occupied West Bank and building another 240 homes at the site, despite U.S. calls for a halt to settlement growth. Construction at the outpost known as the Water Reservoir Hill near the Talman settlement north of Ramallah would greatly damage the freedom of movement of Palestinian farmers in the area, according to BIMCOM, an Israeli planning rights group. Well, no kidding. I mean, you're just killing a bunch of people there. Give me a break. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump through some callers. Guy in Texas. Guy, you're on the line. Yes, Guy. Oh, we just finished with Guy. My bad. Morgan in Maryland. Hi, Jason. I hope you're doing well, and I thank you for all your work. Thank you. Um. I was just thinking, uh, you know, we're we're talking about, you know, the the painful scenarios uh, of the hard powers and whatnot. And uh, I I heard uh, uh, Mr. Jones's great interview with the uh, oh, what's the the shooting training front site uh, front site front site yes. And I, I was thinking maybe it would be great if if you guys could get uh, someone uh, to train the public about civil disobedience. Well, no, I agree. The problem is that civil di disobedience is now extremism and terrorism, according oh, to these, uh, oh, yeah. according to these lexicons totally. and these Mayak reports. <laughs> and uh, I, there's not much to teach, folks. Civil disobedience yeah. was our first discourse. They listen. They started to squash civil oh, d disobedience on a public level in 2003 when the anti-war movement really started to gear up against the invasion of Iraq. By 2004, yeah. when they were having the elections, it was it was commonplace to have something called free speech zone everywhere. It's kind of hard to civilly disobey when you're not even allowed in that area and you have to go to a free speech zone pen. I'm not saying it's non-existent. And in fact, I encourage it on a massive level. You know, that's why we have thousands of people come down to New York City on the anniversary of 9-11 to hand out DVDs. You know, if people want to be civilly disobedient there, that's how to do it. You know, that's that's the way to go. And if we could get you know, 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 people in this country to sit outside of the White House until something was done. Maybe we could get something done. But people don't have the stomach yeah. for it anymore, man. They don't understand what oh, Gandhi understand. was doing it. They don't get what Martin yeah. Luther King Jr. was about. They're buying into these city year commercials that jumps on the backs of those heroes and then throws Mother Teresa in your face with a, yes, I am change. <laughs> and then they have the little private commercials where the girl's like, you know, every time I take off my uh, regular clothes and I put on my city year jacket, it feels like I'm shedding my individual skin, you know. For a worldwide universal skin so we can build a new world. <laughs> I mean, these are the words out of her mouth. Yep. It's unbelievable. But we'll take it. You know, we'll take it like we love the high fructose corn syrup cut with mercury just down in Coca-Cola's like there's no tomorrow. Texting people on our iPhones. You know, just totally oblivious to what's really going down. To what the real agenda is. To the fact we don't have a government formed by the people anymore. We got banksters in control and the Federal Reserve openly saying they're taking over everything. Back after this, it's the Info Warrior Prison Planet TV. I want to remind people out there, the way that you support this operation is get the videos, the books, the DVDs, send out the podcast, tell people about the websites. And right now, you can get the newly released... Aaron Russo, Reflections and Warnings, there it is right there, Reflections and Warnings, free of charge with the purchase of Endgame and other great DVDs over at InfoWars.com right now.
Get out there and be part of the change you want to see in the world. All right, let's go to Joe in New Mexico. Joe, you're on the line. Hey, Jason. Hey, hey. Hey, uh, I don't know if you saw it. New York Times, um, Eric Lichtblau, he just put out an article. It says, documents back Saudi link to extremists. And that just showed up in New York Times. Now they're editing it and saying that, you know, they don't see any direct links to 9-11. But it's a good read. It's got some good information in there. And then the ironic, the sad part is how they talk about the 7,000 victims um, that are petitioning are being told by, you know, we're told that they couldn't uh, pursue it because of uh, sovereign immunity. You're talking about the people that actually didn't uh, didn't take the hush money that decided to try to go after yes. the Saudi royal family and others. So a lot of people settled last summer for an undisclo- undisclosed amount of money, and there were just a few holdouts. And then uh, I think it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the administration sided with the Saudi royals and said that they couldn't be sued. So those that didn't take the settlement just got screwed over altogether. Look, we know that there was some some Saudi funding on some level just by the admissions of Bob Graham in his own book, the 27 redacted pages in the congressional report. On top of that, if you watch Fabled Enemies, you have Robert Wright and uh, John O'Neill, two FBI agents, alluding to that fact as well. However, it was also Pakistani ISI funding. It was also Israeli support on some level, and, of course, continuity of government, shadow government activity with their black ops programs. But I will check out that article, and I appreciate the information, Joe. You have a good night. All right, I want to hit up some news, and then we'll take some calls maybe on the other side. 866-582-9933. MySpace to cut two-thirds of global workforce. Now, we mentioned a story like this. Uh, they didn't say two-thirds. It said they were going to lay off 150 people. I guess now they're only going to have 150 people left. It's an international staff. Remember, MySpace bought up by News Corp. They, they got rid of uh, some of the main players in it. I, I have a great clip. Again, I'm putting it in Invisible Empire where MySpace admits that, you know, federal agents have fake profiles and they're using it to surveil you, the same as Facebook. MySpace, the social networking website owned by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, said on Tuesday it plans to cut about two-thirds of its international workforce and close at least four of its offices outside of the United States. This is the second or third most popular website in the world. Yeah, I'm sure they really need to fire people. No, they do need to clean house and make sure everybody is pledging their allegiance to the police state. I pledge allegiance to the lords of the police with batons who beat me. For taserings and macings in my face and unjust imprisonments through the Internet and cybersecurity. So help me, MySpace gods. The proposed restructuring plan will reduce MySpace international staff to about 150 people from 450, the company said in a statement. The plan cuts come on top of MySpace's announcement last week that it was reducing its U.S. staff by about 30 percent. Uh, to 1,000 people. Oh, see, that's, that might be where I got that story. Saying its staff levels were bloated. And it hurts it hurts its ability to be efficient and nimble. Roughly half of MySpace's total user base comes from outside the United States. Rival Facebook's worldwide user base is more than double that of MySpace, according to market research Comscore. Really? I like I like MySpace so much better than Facebook. I mean, I guess I've been getting some really good news tips over at Facebook.com slash the info warrior and MySpace.com slash Jason Burmis. But you know, again, It's a dual-edged sword. You can use it to empower and enslave. A lot of the stories I'm reading you tonight were tips from listeners. You know, at the same time, if I'm reporting on every single thing I'm doing throughout my Facebook, that sure profiles me, doesn't it? You know, the person that writes their mood down 24-7, 365, I'm combing my hair, I'm eating an ice cream home, I'm going to uh, Johnny's house later to play football. I don't know if that's necessary. We'll be back after this. It's the Info Warrior.